Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, there are warnings about the escalating levels of violence in Cameroon's Anglophone crisis. There's a video showing armed English sep separatists with a decapitated policeman is authenticated. Also, South Africa's Justice Department warns that a ruling by the Constitutional Court that the private personal use of cannabis should be legalized is a risky one. And Nigerian tour operators try to boost the domestic travel industry by using social media to raise the profile of the country's beauty spots. We take a closer look. But first, Amnesty International has raised the alarm about the escalating violence caused by Cameroon's Anglophone crisis. On Tuesday, the rights group said it authenticated a video showing armed English-speaking separatists who'd laid out the bruised head of a decapitated policeman on a blood-soaked white cloth. Since 2016, hundreds have been killed and around 200,000 people displaced from Cameroon because of a secessionist bid in the minority Anglophone regions in the north and southwest. Elections are due on October 7th and separatists are threatening to further disrupt the vote. Laria Allegrozzi is the researcher behind Amnesty International's reports on Cameroon's Anglophone crisis. She tells us more about the separatists' increasingly violent tactics. The situation in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon is getting uh, increasingly desperate. Um, I think it would be a mistake to depict it as uh, just a simple confrontation between a brutal army and a bunch of peaceful protesters, because several Anglophone people have joined uh, armed separatist uh, groups and have joined the armed struggle, um, and they are carrying out attacks both against the security forces and the general population. These groups are responsible for killing dozens of of, uh, security forces, police, gendarme, soldiers, and they've also uh, carried out attacks designed to um, strike fear among the ordinary people. Um, they have uh, gone as far as burning down schools, um, assaulting physically teachers and students for not enforcing a boycott on education. They've also attacked uh, traditional authorities and local authorities or anyone who they see as a supporter or collaborators of uh, the army or uh, the authorities. I think this repeated targeting of the um, um, civilians and the ordinary people show uh, brutality and a total disregard of um, human life. So, of course, we are very concerned uh, by these uh, acts and have called on the authorities to um, make sure that those responsible are um, held accountable. Elections are coming up next month. What do you think that that is going to mean for the conflict? Um, elections are likely to add another layer of confusion, of uh, troubles, of insecurity to an already um, very fragile situation. Um, so, um, for example, the number of attacks by the separatists um, and uh, the brutal also response of the security forces are likely to increase. Um, so we should expect a multiplication of incidents before, during and after the elections, with the armed separatists in particular uh, trying to disrupt and boycott the electoral process at all costs, um, ensuring no one can vote both in the north and southwest. Do you feel that there is enough international attention to the scale of the conflict and crisis in Cameroon? Um, yes, there is, and there's probably more attention on this crisis than um, other crises unfolding in uh, Cameroon. Let's not forget that in Cameroon at the moment you have at least two military fronts open, one in the north and southwest in the Anglophone regions and one um, up north in the far north uh, region where uh, a conflict is ongoing between the security forces and Boko Haram. So the international community is concerned, and uh, I think there will be more attention um, around uh, the election. Uh, time. Amnesty International's Alaria Elagrozzi there. Now, in a landmark ruling, South Africa's top courts ruled that the private personal use of cannabis is now legal. The decision has been slammed by police and the Justice Department, who are worried that the move will encourage crime and users to migrate to harder drugs. Nicola Schumer has more. South Africa's constitutional court was not used to the public cheering its rulings. But when it legalized the private use of marijuana, pro-cannabis campaigners were ecstatic. What a relief. What a relief. Anybody got a joint? <laughs> 
The court said that banning the use of cannabis in private by adults was unconstitutional and therefore invalid. And hopefully the 600 cannabis arrests a day are now going to stop because we're going to clog the courts and it's just going to be a waste of time and effort for the whole of the judiciary. Please leave South Africa's cannabis users alone. The ruling will not decriminalise the use of the drug in public, but that didn't prevent a few smokers from lighting up outside the court. Supplying cannabis remains illegal, but cultivation for personal use is now authorised. Healers who provide the drug to their patients hope the new law would make their lives easier. Healers in South Africa for the first time after so many years, you know, we are going to have all the rights you can think of. Granted by this court, the rights to be able to administer medical marijuana to our patients without any sort of infringement. That for traditional health practitioners in the country is, is enormous victory. Use of cannabis to ease suffering from, for example, cancer or AIDS is growing in many parts of the world. But South Africa's health and justice ministries will be disappointed by the court's decision as they oppose the legalization. They argued that the use of cannabis could encourage people to migrate to harder drugs and that it could lead to crime. Look now at some news in brief. Nigeria has declared a state of emergency after at least 100 people died in the worst flooding the country's seen in six years. Two major rivers burst their banks after days of heavy rains and the crisis has hit communities in 12 of 36 states. Some of the areas worst hit are along the Niger River and its water levels are expected to rise further with more risk of flooding expected. Nyame's blamed gunman from Burkina Faso for the kidnapping of an Italian missionary in southwestern Niger. Pierre Luigi Machali was abducted on Monday night in Bamwanga. Witnesses say that about eight men arrived on motorbikes, broke into the priest's house and forced him to go with them. He'd reportedly been living in Niger for 11 years. The country's border areas near Mali and Burkina Faso are particularly vulnerable to jihadist attacks. Britain and Finland have frozen aid payments to Zambia over concerns of fraud and corruption within the government. President Edgar Lungu's faced graft allegations from within his own party, but his office says that he's ordered an inquiry into the alleged misuse of aid funds happened, that happened from 2012. Donors suspect that at least $4 million channeled into a social welfare scheme may have been misused. The UK said it's taking a zero tolerance approach to corruption. Now, tourism in Nigeria has a lot of room for development. Most of the country's fortunes currently rely on oil and gas. But there is a growing push for more to be done to support the travel industry. And where better to start than on its own doorstep? Social media is being harnessed by those in the know to encourage more Nigerians to try out what their homeland has to offer. Take a look. After a journey by bus of more than eight hours and a climb of nearly 700 steps, this group of young tourists from Lagos is finally enjoying the view in Idanre, 400 kilometers south of their bustling megacity home. Tour guide Chiamaka organized this tour for some of her 40,000 Instagram followers. And on this trip, it's all about sharing the moment. If you're going on a vacation and you just want to relax, maybe with your, um, with your spouse, sometimes you just go off social media to just take time off. But if you're going on adventure, going hiking, you always have to document. Sometimes it can be for your own memory, you know, to show your family and so that you can remember for years to come. The buzz around Chiamaka's photos and her tours is good news for the Nigerian tourism industry, which is enjoying a boom, especially online. With many natural and historical sites, the country has an immense tourism potential that is relatively untapped. I've always enjoyed doing tourism and I'm actually very privileged to have been able to travel outside of Nigeria to do tourism. But I always was curious as to why I didn't do tourism in Nigeria. So when I saw this on social media, the social prefect tours, I said I was very excited for the opportunity. But poor road conditions, lack of infrastructure and concern over security remain significant obstacles. For this journalist focused on tourism, Nigeria could become a must-see global destination if the government were to invest in this still emerging industry. We have a long way to go within tourism in Nigeria, but then I feel like with the young people like I, who are exploring more and sharing more of that information, in the next 10 years, Nigeria would be a 
able to compete with more of the um, like South Africa and co who actually like or Kenya and they spend so much money in pushing tourism for their country. It will take a while before tourists from across the world join these budding hikers. So in the meantime, these lucky few can enjoy Nigeria's wide open spaces and take more selfies. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.